Well, good morning. It's January 27th, and I am here with Ed and Arlene Marcus and in their home in Delray Beach. And this morning, Ed is going to share his story about the honor flight that he was involved in in 2022. So, and we have his scrapbook here. So Ed, if you'll just kind of tell us, just take us through what happened. All right. We had a meeting in our clubhouse and we were discussing the honor flight. And one of the homeowners went on the honor flight and he was telling us, you have to go. It's, you'll remember this the rest of your life. So I said, okay, I'll give it a shot. I had to send in forms, uh, the time I was in, you know, my rank, uh, what branch of service, and so on. And then it took around two, three months, uh, I got a call stating I was accepted to go on the honor flight and uh, I was going to meet my handler. The handler is a person that takes care of you, service you, any need you want there. Uh, and my wife and myself met him for breakfast. His name was John, and he brought her flowers and he was discussing the honor flight with us. Real nice guy. And uh, that's how I got into the honor flight. Okay. So, um, so this is something that, does it happen annually? Do uh, they do this every the year? Next, the next one is in April. In yeah. April. Okay. April. Okay. All right. Okay. This is myself and this is John. Uh, so John, you said you called him a handler. Is he also your guardian? He's yeah, same thing, guardian, handler. guardian handler. They, they gave uh, him handler. different names. He did everything for me, like I was telling you, but take me to the bathroom. It was, <laughs> it was, it was amazing. And his daughter went along. Uh, there was 170 of us on a flight, American Airlines, we flew to Washington. Uh, but before we went there, we, uh, I was picked up by people that were in charge, and we went to this Baptist church we was gonna meet in Delray. There was a few of us there. The ages ranged from 96 to around 68 on the flight, and there were police, police there, they were firemen, and they had three medics in case anyone got sick or had a problem. Wow. Uh, when, and we left around four o'clock in the morning, and we had an escort with, the pl with motorcycle escort, uh, plus on the overpasses there were fire engines with their lights on, and you know, uh, a it was amazing. Send -off. It was amazing. Yes. Who put this together? Who put your book together? John. Uh, John, John put yes. it together after you got back. So yeah, these are great pictures of you, John, his daughter. What's here? Okay. We met, this is Arlington. We went, went to Washington. Yeah, I'm going to just flip this up and okay. just give a shot of this so someone can see uh, what the book looks like. So Arlington Cemetery. Yes, this is uh, Arlington of all the, uh, the tombstones, the white tombstones, thousands and thousands uh, were there. And while on the way, we came across Audie Murphy. I don't know who, if you know Audie Murphy was, mm -hmm. he was second, mm -hmm. uh, he was decorated uh, soldier. He got the Congressional Medal, he got more medals than anyone. He was buried in Arlington. Also, Lee Marvin, the actor, he played in the Dirty Dozen. Mm -hmm. That was one of his uh, movies. He was buried there. And the General Colin Powell, I think he was Secretary of State, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, he mm -hmm. was buried there. And I have here, I was bending over to touch the grave. I wanted to put a stone there, not religion. If a person dies and you go there, just it's a remembrance there, Somebody but if can. not, I just kissed the stone, and uh, it would it was something. It and was, your religion is Jewish. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, amazing picture there. So you visited the tomb of the unknown. Uh, oh yeah, that is something. That's the 
the changing of the guards there. Now they know who the uh, soldier, the unknown soldier, because they have DNA. Then they, they never had it, so uh -huh. they didn't know there. And they didn't know the rank of the person that died. So uh, when they changed the guards, no one has any rank, private, uh, corporal, sergeant, or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, uh, here was the CB monument. They, there's a construct, that's a construction battalion. They, they work, in other words, when people take a landing, World War II, they fix up uh, uh, the land there, they fix up uh, so planes could land on uh, the airport. It's mm -hmm. amazing. We have one of the guys here was uh, a CB. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are people here. Who were on the trip uh, with you? you? Yes, there. Now, I tell you, I met people on a trip from Kentucky. Really? Over there, yeah, from Kentucky mm -hmm. and from Texas. Yeah. On the I, armor flight. I remember you telling me there were 180 people on the plane. So yeah. that would maybe be 90 military people and 90 guardians. Right. So tell them about uh, how you become a guardian. Do you know that? Well, I guess, yeah. You have to apply uh, to be a guardian. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess they they have to check you out, and plus uh, you have to pay. It's not cheap. It's four hundred dollars. Uh huh. So so you all they pay it's for right. everything for the uh, the veteran. Right. And the guardian pays their way. Right. But every guardian is there to push a wheelchair or meet your needs. Right. I guess you said you everything, everything you need. need. Right. But your wife could not be your guardian because no. that's their rule. Right. right. Yeah. Right, that's the rule. And we did a lot of walking, like I said before. Uh, it's, I must have walked maybe six miles. And I took John, put me in a wheelchair. I, I can't walk. I'm just, <laughs> my legs are given out there, you know. And we have a picture of his daughter and uh, his, his daughter's guardian there. She's a guardian too. too. She was a guardian yes. too for yes. a, a veteran. Yes. yes. That's amazing. Uh, and, uh, okay. Let's see what else. Okay. And here's the Air Force Memorial who's there. Oh, uh, that's, I'm going to show that. I'm going to flip this around and show this. If you can see this on the video uh, the Air Force monument that's beautiful and these are the pictures of uh, the people that went on a flight and I'm mm -hmm. over here too I don't uh -huh. know if you can see me I was there I was in a wheelchair there uh -huh. <laughs> I was tired. okay and uh, we have for the Vietnam Memorial I'll tell you it was a wall was unbelievable. Uh, it really got to me. I, I started to have tears of all these young men who died and people who were touching their names on the wall and bringing flowers. It's, I told John, you know, uh, it's just, it's just, you know, uh, too much. You have to really appreciate it if you, when you've been in the service, you know, to see what, you know, what went on and uh, how you act. And uh, here's, uh, I have a photo with, with a general, supposed to be a general, and a regular troop. Uh huh. There. And, uh, yeah. and we, you know, did a lot of walking, like I said before. Uh, yeah, so I see the map of the, yeah, the mall, mall there. The mm -hmm. mall, and uh, now let me see what else is here. Yeah. And they have the Women's Memorial here. Mm -hmm. We had the Lincoln Memorial here, and this was the Korean Memorial, where it is, there it's life-size statues. They must have been ten feet tall, walking through uh, the marsh with their with their rifles and ponchos, and uh, and here is the uh, Iwo Jima monument. Monument. Uh, it was amazing.
Then I had, uh, I took a photo with, uh, I think the lady was Rosa Parks. I don't know if you remember her. Yes. With, you know, with the bus uh, mm -hmm. there. And uh, I was hugging her. I said, hey, why not? She was a good looking mama, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I might as well there. So, uh, Tell yeah. them about the mail. Oh, yeah. When we were going back from, in, from Washington, going back home from okay. Delray Beach, right. Everyone got mail. Uh, oh. Either you were in the Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, Coast Guard, and I'll tell you why. Opening the mail, we started to cry. <laughs> it still affects me. Grown men, thank you, veterans, people all over the country. Who had and written also a letter. family. Yeah, family too. We would, I was told to send a letter, mm -hmm. and he didn't know about it. And my granddaughter and my children all sent a mail. And he opened the mail, and he saw he, and our grandchildren who started to cry. Oh, my gracious. Because he said, how, how did they do this? How did this happen? You know, like it was like he couldn't believe it. Yeah. And he what said, you knew. He said, so you knew. I said, yes, I did. Uh -huh. I did it. I, I sent the letter. And my children, my daughter-in-law sent a separate one. My son sent a separate one. My daughter, granddaughter, separate, so that he got mail. Plus mail from people he didn't know that were just from patriotic, the and they from just the country. wanted people to know that they appreciate. They were appreciated, even though the government didn't say so. Uh huh. How amazing! Yeah, and that's very touching. Yes, yes it, it was. was. Okay, here we got the Palm Beach Airport. Airport. This was the honor guard w waiting for us, uh -huh. and they had the I think a Scottish band were there. And on the way home, I couldn't believe it. There were hundreds of people came to uh, the airport. Came to the airport to see us. I mean, little kids. They didn't even know who we were. Big they kids. They just came. Women, right. men. You know. Right. Thank you, veterans. Look at this. It was, uh, you know, you know. I said to uh, one of the guys there, I said, there's, there's really hope for our country now, you know. Yeah. These people, you know, and we had a lot of rain. It was rainy there too. He was uh, the Cub Scouts, and I was walking out. I was like in a trance. I couldn't believe what went on. You know, I never heard of this until we did I Got a Secret. Oh, right. With I Got Communities is the first time I ever learned that there was even such a thing as this. And then, of course, that was part of your secret that uh, was part of our game. And now to see this is just amazing. And to learn about what it is is really such an amazing thing. I think that's a puzzle. And, uh, okay. Yeah, here's some more of these people with banners and little kids with signs with American flags and so there's lots of Americans who are still very right. thankful right. Yes. for our country and our freedom and for everyone who's been a part yeah oh, all you. ages thank you for your service yeah all ages yes all ages and we were shaking hands with the people you know and it's it's something, you know, I, I tell people, you have to see. You have to see. And, uh, and even the dogs? the dogs? Dogs were there too. And how John, who was handler or whatever you called him, whatever you call him, all the things that he did to make the scrapbook the way it is. Yes. It was unbelievable, yeah. unbelievable. It is very unbelievable. And you have these little things that have Southeast Florida on our flight here and pictures that John's put together. I'm going to flip back over to this to give you an idea of what he was talking about, about all the people that were there to welcome them home. And this was in 2022. And I agree, Ed, uh, many things in America are not great, but America is still the greatest place in the world right. to live. And, uh, and a lot of people are very thankful. Uh -huh. So now, I guess this is your itinerary, and this is the letter from John. Read it. Ed. 
Thank you for your love of this great country and for allowing me to enjoy the wonderful experience of the honor flight with you. Your friend, John McAlphin? Alan? McAlphin. Yeah. So thank you, John, wherever you are, for doing this for Ed. What a, this is truly, truly a wonderful story. And um, so from I Got Communities, we are certainly, certainly thankful for Ed and thankful for your support for Ed uh, as well. But what a great story and thanks for sharing this with thank, us today. Thank you.